In this video, I'll give a short presentation of doing 3D visualizations in CD Engine. So think of this as the up and running video of a series of uh, videos. So in the, we will really not do much advanced in this video. Um, at the end of it, we will hopefully have something like this, um, a simple visualization um, based on some data that we have created ourselves. So that's a goal. Um, in our videos, I'll go much more into detail with the user interface, how CD Engine works and the like, but this one just up and running. Good. Um, let's switch to um, CD Engine. So when you start CD Engine, it will prompt you to log in and depending on how your login is set up, you will uh, need to enter your credentials. Um, typically, we have it as our ArcGIS portal login, but it can be our logins. Once you have logged in, you will be met by this uh, greeting screen. And I must admit, I normally just close it uh, either up in the corner or by pressing escape on the keyboard. All of the functionality is available from within the software in a way that I personally think uh, more organized. If you if you run the things from up here, you typically will get everything stored in a default folder and a bit odd. So um, I'll close it out and um, be in the interface. Um, not much fun talking about the interface before. We have some data to demonstrate it. So the first thing to do would be to go up to the file menu um, and activate and say you want to do a new. The first thing you want to do in this startup visit is to uh, create a city engine project. So that is a default project, um, but typically it's a good idea to keep organized because there's a lot of files going along. So um, choose new city engine project next and give your project a name. So test uh, one disk for the fun of it. Um, choose something more saying naturally. Um, and you can see that it will be stored. It will be stored in our default workspace under documents. I'll show you that in a later video. So now I have down here in my navigator, which is basically a browser, file browser. For City Engine, I have a project called Test One. Next thing we want to do is that we want to create what is called a scene, that is the container for our data. So we will um, go up and again say new. And this time we will choose a City Engine scene. And you can see it will ask me where I want to store my scene, my project, it will be in my test one project. And this is then the name of my scene. So uh, I'll just call this one um, a full dot, I think, oh, that was not a dot. Um, so this is this old boulevard that we've been working on in previous videos. And um, that's uh, the, so that would be the name of this C E J is the extension of the scenes. Then you'll need a coordinate system. So if um, you're working um, in Denmark, you might know that the what the coordinate system is. So it will be, and you'll know the ESPG number for it. Um, if you don't know which coordinate system, and it has to be a projected coordinate system. So it has to be something that is in meters or feet or whatever. Um, a good guess will be to use a UTM uh, projection. So most situation that would be suitable. So, and if you don't know which zone you are in, you can, um, you can go to Google and then you say, if you Google UTM zone map, there'll be some maps showing zones. And if you can't locate yourself in one of those, 
That is um, a link. What do you, Tim? So now I mine. So um, start this one, and uh, this is a zoomable one. So you can. So if I want to do something on Copenhagen, I can see that I'm here, and if I click, it will tell me that will be zone thirty-three. Um, in Denmark, we typically because most of Denmark is in zone thirty-two. We typically use zone 32 for our entire mapping project. So we'll typically use zone 32, but strictly speaking, Copenhagen is in zone 33. So once you have ascertained which UTM zone you are in, you can um, start browsing. You choose your one here and you have a search um, one up here where you can type a search string. That you can enter um, and you can then browse down uh, say okay you want a uh, projector coordinate system you want it for UTM you want it for wherever you are I want it for Europe and I can then browse down to find the one I want to use that's 33 I want to use this ETIS European Terrestrial Reference System so 32 yeah, here somewhere there um, which is one possibility the other possibility that we could use is um, the 25 832 this is the one that normally so this is the ESPG code we normally use so that will bring us up um, exactly the same really so choose that say okay so wherever you are choose the UCM zone that you use or whatever projected coordinate system that you use and I'm now ready so important thing is that within a scene all data must have this projection so this is the projection for your data so that has to be set if you haven't set your projection it will go horribly wrong so now we have our drawing area in here we have a see this one has now been have a been in bold because down in this we will have a scene and this is the active scene so it's showing that the active scene is in this project. The easiest way to start is simply by downloading one of ESRI's maps. Um, you can also download um, OpenStreetMap data, um, and that's fine. It typically uh, needs a bit of polishing, but otherwise fine. So, and you can have if you have your own georeferenced. Um, Images you can use that as a background. I'll just go up and say get map data. So this is a simple way of getting started. It will bring me this interface. Um, you might say, Oh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. Yep. Um, so if you zoom out, you will see that the middle of nowhere is just off the coast of Africa. Um, so at 0, 0.0, you can search for a location. So Copenhagen, capital, Denmark. And uh, we can zoom in on there that we want to work with. So this is Opel Varden. And we'll zoom into something like this. Um, you can choose a L photograph or a map. First thing I will prefer to start with a map um, but aerial photographs can be useful but in this case I'll just switch to a map and this is what you'll get downloaded and um, I'll basically really interested in somewhere like here if I say this one up here before it it said uh, set extent so this is my area that it will download and this is approximately as uh, as small as it can get, and um, that's uh, 
probably want to cover let's just take this part also so um something like this i can download my base map so this is this one i can download a um a terrain so if you have an area with a high terrain in it lots of variation you should do that um i don't want that in this case i just want it flat because this is mainly flat and um for starting that is the easiest and then you can download um data from uh, open street map so what they call networks that's roads typically and footprints that's the shape of the buildings we can do that and then we can turn them off uh in a moment so um we'll just uh, start by downloading all of it and then we'll ignore it for this video but use them again in a later video it will take a moment to um, connect to the different servers once it has connected you can have um, additional possibilities to download openstreet specific things um, cycleways whatever from open street map um it's typically just the buildings you're interested in and uh, the highways that um basically highway is a a common tag for all of the elements in the open street map of, of roads so also paths um it's a bit of a um, Open street map data is ca is a bit messy to work with. Um, so start off by just keeping it um, as it is at the moment and uh, say finished. We have all of these options to create. Uh, I don't want to do great street in uh, intersection shapes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, these are the things that it can do once you have uh, loaded the data set. Basically, I don't want to do any of these. Um, you can do them afterwards. Let's leave. I'll leave them on. Um, we will just turn them off. Um, and. Um, and we can just start uh, downloading your data and you have your um, map and in a moment you will also get your roads and buildings and i'll just basically turn these off so now we have we can start we have our base map we have our elements in our interface and we have and whatever we have of this what i want to do now is i'll just um uh create some quick roads and show you the the principles of um of um city engine so this view is at some 3d angle to start with drawing roads it will be best to have it in a planner view from above so under windows we can say new viewport and we can have a top view and it will open up here i'll just drag it to this uh, pane so um we have it here and it will be the same as uh and those the only thing is that you'll need just to uh, focus it focus is f key on the keyboard so that will zoom to the select in this case all of my um my map and then i can start drawing um data so I'll start out by, um, I think I'll start over here, this area. So we have a ma major road here. And um, let's start by creating a road. So the road tools are these up here. Um, we need a layer. This is the streets that have been automatically loaded from a street map. I want to start by creating my own road. They are called graphs. So linear elements are called graphs here. Um, 
road. Uh, that did really work. So, um, and um, once I've got this selected, I can choose my, there's a freehand drawing that will just follow your mouse. Um, have to have a more um, calm hand than I do. So I use this polygon street drawing so I can click. So I'll just start out by clicking here and then I'll follow the road more or less. I will remember to click at all intersections because that will be of importance for me later. And I can finish by pressing escape. So I draw that road. I have another road coming down here. So I'll start with this one and you can see when I get close to it that it has a red little triangle or oh, square indicating that it will snap to the center point here. And uh, if I now create a new road from up here to here, what you see is that immediately it fills in this area of some subdivisions. So this is what they call a block and the individual elements within this are then called lots. Um, I can use my selection tool. So this, this is a selection tool. If I choose my selection tool and click on one of these, I will have my inspector window over here. And it will say that this is a shape, which is what their term for these objects that we've been drawing. Um, uh, and it has no rules associated with it but it has a start rule called lot. So what we basically need is that we need to assign a rule file. There are some built-in rule files in um, the software that we can use. So um, I'll just um, press the assign and then I can navigate within my workspace. So you can't navigate your complete computer only within the workspace. We'll talk about workspace later. And I'll go into this Israelib. That is where the default rules are. Go to rules and want to have my, uh, oh, where did my building go? Up there, that's where they were. And I can do a building from footprint. There are different um, rule sets. So let's use this one. And it, I can then, uh, enter some information about the building, which we'll look at this in another video. Once I have selected my rule, I can press generate and it will now generate, you can see the shadow. But if I switch to my 3D view, I have this uh, immensely tall building at this point. So, um, and basically I can now, I'll just select uh, the other lots and assign the same rule to them. Rules, buildings, buildings for footprint, and generate. And um, our first model. Of course, there's, um, there's lots more to it than, uh, oh, that was wrong. Um, to how to how these buildings and there's lots more control of how we can do it. But this was the basics of getting a model built in um, City Engine with um, from scratch, if you wish. So um, in uh, later videos, I will. Um, Hopefully, uh, you'll see me there, 
and uh, hopefully we can um, I will demonstrate some of those other abilities for making a bit more realistic, making a bit more control of your maps. But uh, hope you like this short introduction and hope to see you in the videos. So bye.